As a reward for successfully completing his investigation, Diktyrev was offered a promotion to colonel and the position of mission coordinator. He declined the opportunity to work at the HQ and submitted a personal request to be sent to the zone as the USS permanent observer. The information about the development of psi devices obtained by Diktyrev alerted USS commanders. All the information gathered on ex-designated laboratories was removed from military archives and filed as top secret. All personnel working in the zone were ordered to prevent the disclosure of information about the laboratories at any cost. Several experimental samples were made on the basis of technical documents for item 62. Following a set of test trials, it was decided not to go ahead with large-scale deployment of the weapon due to the high cost of ammunition. Nonetheless, it would be reasonable to assume that further development of the Gauss rifle is ongoing. Skadas became home to any and all who could reach it. Fierce stalker resistance did not stop the bandits from making regular and ultimately unsuccessful attempts to establish their so-called order on the ship. Despite this ongoing struggle, the Skadovsk carried on its unique brand of life. Unfortunately, it didn't last long. Bloodsuckers from the lair near the Skadovsk found a way to the ship. When bloodsucker attacks began to occur, even in broad daylight, it was decided to mount an assault on the lair. Unfortunately, the hunters failed to advance deep into the tunnels, and soon afterwards, a wave of bloodsuckers annihilated all the ship's residents in one fell swoop. A fragile balance was reached between Freedom and Duty squads at Yanov Station. Tired of the endless struggle, fighters of both factions started leaving their squads and joining the Free Stalkers. Professors Hermann and Ozersky were forced to cut short their scientific research in the zone due to a lack of data. On returning to the outside world, the two scientists proceeded to engage in unrelated work. Gary's stories about the Army's fate scared stalkers away from Pripyat. The few who dared to venture into the city ran into inexplicable phenomena which added further dark strokes to an already gloomy picture of the dead city. The area around Yanov Station gained a reputation for being one of the most dangerous places in the zone. Fewer and fewer stalkers make it back from raids, many dying at the hands of mutants within view of the camp. One of those missing is Trapper, who set out to track down a chimera on what appears to have been his last hunt. The rumors of Zulu's fate reached the leader of duty, General Veronin. Counter to most expectations, Veronin decided to posthumously award Zulu with the Silver Shield, duty's highest decoration. Vano headed off to the freedom-controlled military warehouses, where his cheerful personality and optimism quickly earned him the popularity they merited. Ultimately, he took charge of a small group of researchers involved in investigating anomalous areas. A new group appeared in the zone. They are well trained, but their objectives are not known. Rumors say they used to be monolith fighters. 
Their leader is known as Strider. Senior Lieutenant Sokolov continued to take part in flying missions over the zone. During one such recon flight over Lamansk, his aircraft was shot down by mercenaries. Two weeks later, he was picked up by a patrol near the cordon. Within a month of his rescue, Sokolov had left the Air Force, joining a civil airline instead. A group of stalkers was forced to seek shelter on Noah's old barge during a particularly powerful emission. When the barge was attacked by a horde of snorks afterwards, stalkers were forced to concede that the barge was as good a defense against mutants as anything they'd seen. Even more astonishing was a litter of pseudo-dog puppies that Noah himself led into battle against the snorks. Having overcome his alcoholism, Cardin left the Skadovsk. Stalkers said he went to look for his missing friends. Several days later, he returned, suffering from wounds and radiation poisoning. As soon as his wounds healed, he left the zone for the second and final time. Strelok passed on the information he obtained on his trip to the Chernobyl NPP to the USS commanders. This prompted the government to create a scientific institute for research of the Chernobyl anomalous area. Strelok took up the position of chief scientific consultant to the institute. When Colonel Kowalski, commander of the Stingray Group, returned from the zone, he was forced to explain the reasons for the failure of Operation Fairway. Following a dragged-out investigation and the brass's failed attempt to make him the fall guy, the colonel was finally given an honorable discharge.